day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody want to come up and sing? Welcome to Pendleton Center United Methodist Church. I'm Scott Dabb. If you are new to our church, please pick up a gift at the connection site in the back of the sanctuary after worship. And please fill out your friendship card to get on the mailing list, sign up for activities, and for prayers and concerns or notes for the staff. Enjoy the service. And we do welcome you to worship here at Pendleton Center this morning. Um, the clipboards that are going around are about our 24-hour prayer vigil that's coming up this coming weekend, Friday and Saturday. Um, sign up. Come. It's a wonderful time of prayer. It's a quiet time of prayer. And you, you'll be able to lift up your church family and all, all kinds of folks and whatever requests that you have as well. It's a wonderful thing to participate in. And um, if you have a specific request that you'd like the folks who are praying in the vigil um, to lift up, please write it down on your friendship card. And please, please, please fill out those friendship cards for me, even if you just put your name on it and drop it in the offering so that um, we know that you're here and um, I can let Pastor Tom know that, that you were here. And um, the Seneca Street dinner is the other clipboard that's going around. We always like to um, be of assistance and serve um, the, our brothers and sisters in Christ as they do that outreach ministry um, in the city of Buffalo. Financial Peace University is starting next Saturday, um, the 23rd. It will be on Saturday mornings from 9.30 to 11.30 for nine consecutive weeks. Scott Dabb, who you just saw up in the video, is leading it. And um, if you haven't signed up yet, you can still sign up. There's a clipboard in the fellowship hall. If you don't sign up and Saturday morning you wake up and you decide, I think God wants me to go to that Financial Peace University thing, just show up. Scott will welcome you. I know he will. Um, and Catch the Spirit is another time for learning and growing. It's um, an event sponsored every year by our um, United Methodist um, Niagara Frontier District. And we have a lot of Pendleton Center folks are involved in this. Linda Barzakowski is on the committee that actually puts this whole thing together. And we have three of our Pendleton Center folks who are teaching different workshops. So if you want to learn more about the church, more about your faith, more about what it means to be a United Methodist and to serve, um, even to be involved in a special event called Stop Hunger Now, there are some brochures on the table in the back, um, and you can ask me about that, or you can ask Linda. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for this day, for the opportunity to gather together and worship to come and meet you because you invited us. Be with us, Lord. Guide our worship. Prepare our hearts to receive all that you have for us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you stand as you're able and join us in singing, Holy, Holy, Holy is our Lord God Almighty.
Will you greet one another with the peace of the Spirit? Peace of the Spirit. God's peace be with you. to have all these children coming to seek God. Yeah? Have you ever had to get ready for a special occasion? What kind of special occasions do you have to get ready for? Christmas. Christmas is definitely a special occasion you have to get ready for, right? New Year's. Did you get ready? Did you do special stuff to get ready for New Year's? Yeah. Birthdays. You get ready for birthdays, right? Valentine's Day. Do you get ready for Valentine's Day too? Yeah. What else? Do you have one? Yeah. What else? Easter, definitely. What else? St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Halloween. Yeah. We get ready for all kinds of special occasions, don't we? Why do we have to get ready for special occasions? That they would, that's right. I, I think that's true. If you didn't have your Christmas tree up, where the heck would St. Nicholas know to put the presents? Exactly. Exactly. I'm, you know, you have to be ready for these things, right? Today is my daughter's birthday. She's my oldest daughter, and she's 31 years old today. Yes, yeah, I know. <laughs> that means I am, like, so old, right? Wow. It's true, but if I want to make her birthday special, I have to do some preparations, don't I? Yeah, because if I don't prepare and she comes over, I can say happy birthday, and that's a good thing. That's a good thing, and I'm ready to say happy birthday to her. But what else would she like me to be ready with, maybe? What do you think? A cake, maybe a cake, maybe some presents. Is that what you were going to say? Yeah, game. maybe a game to play. What else? Do you like ice, you usually eat ice cream on your cake for birthday? Yeah, me too, I like ice cream with my cake. I actually like ice cream better than cake. So when they have ice cream with cake, it's good. Yeah, did you think of something? Yeah. We get ready for special occasions because they're special. And if we don't do something ahead of time to make those things special, they won't be as special, will they? So we do that. When, when we get ready to come and meet with God, is that special? It is. It's very special to come and meet with God. So we have to get ready to meet with God. What are some things we can do to get ready to meet with God? How? Get ready how? What would you get ready? What would you do to get ready? Get dressed. Definitely get up in time to get dressed on Sunday. That's good. What else? Pray. You can spend some time praying before you come and that'll help you get ready. What else? Yeah. What else? Praising. Maybe spending some time praising a little bit. On the drive over, put up, you know, a CD with some praise songs on it or turn on FLN and listen to some praise music that's on there, right? If we praise God and pray to God and think about God and get ourselves ready, that makes our worship time more special, doesn't it? It turns every Sunday into a special occasion. Do you have anything you're thankful for today? My my dad, my family, <coughs> my mom. Yeah. Friends and family. Sisters and brothers. Friends and family. Everything. Amen. Let's have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you want to come and 
and meet with us so that we can have the most special Sunday ever. And it can be that special every single Sunday. We are grateful, God, that you make every Sunday special and that you are with us throughout the whole week. Bless us, bless our families, keep us safe so we can grow and tell other people about you and how much you love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, off you go to church school. What a blessing. This morning, I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here to help lead worship as many of our people are on vacation or with the youth on retreat, but it's always a special experience to be able to be here and help in worshiping our Lord. As we are thankful for all that he's done for us, let's get ready to return to him our gifts, tithes, and offerings.
offer these gifts to you. We ask that you take them, bless them, multiply them to use to further your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. We have a few joys and concerns this morning. The biggest joy of all, if you have not heard, Pastor Saeed has been released from Iran, along with four or five others. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, please keep John Zimmerman and his family in your prayers. John's father died suddenly this week. For those of you that don't, don't know, he's the one that plays the guitar with the worship group on Sunday mornings. Teresa Shenton had hip surgery. Please keep her in your prayers. Claire Bolslaw is having some health issues and unable to get into church. Please keep Joan Starnelli's family in your prayer. She passed away Friday. Sandy Farnham is at Odd Fellows and could use some prayers. And also, please keep everyone that is traveling back from retreat today in your prayers. We're supposed to get some nasty weather, so hopefully they'll beat that back. So we go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, you are so good. We just praise you for all the wonderful things that are happening, for the release of those prisoners and all the other good things that are happening among the darkness in this world. We ask that you be with those who have lost loved ones. Fill them with your comfort and your peace. Just let them feel your loving arms around them. Help them to know it's only a temporary separation. Lord, be with all those who are needed of healing, physical, mental, emotional, relational. Lord, just be with all of them. Touch them and bring your healing. We ask that you be with those who are going through any struggles right now, be it financial, work. It's just really tough sometimes, and it's good to know that you're here to help us through. And Lord, please hear us as we bring to you our silent prayer. Lord, we invite you in. Fill each and every one of us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to hear what we need to hear in worship today and in Pastor Lisa's message. Let us be a light to the world in this darkness. Be with Pastor Lisa as she brings the message that you've laid upon her heart. We ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Shall we now hear from the word of the Lord? Hello again. <laughs> this morning's reading is from Exodus 19 verses 10 to 22. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day, because on that day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits for the people around the mountain and tell them, be careful that you do not approach the mountain or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain is to be put to death. They are to be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on them. No person or animal shall be permitted to live. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast may they approach the mountain. After Moses had gone down to the mountain, to the people, he consecrated them and washed their clothes. 
Then he said to the people, prepare yourselves for the third day. Abstain from sexual relations. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended, it, descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace, and the whole mountain trembled violently. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. The Lord descended to the top of Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up, and the Lord said to him, Go down and warn the people so they do not force their way through to see the Lord, and many of them perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate, consecrate themselves, or the Lord will break out against them. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Linda. Don't you love to have a turn to read God's word? I love to read God's word. I jump up. Nobody, you know, I, I love it when I get to do that. This morning, we're continuing our series about what happened to God's people Israel in the wilderness as they were traveling toward the promised land. How they came to know God all over again after forgetting about God during 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Since God had made Moses Israel's leader and brought them out of Egypt into the wilderness, they received messages and food and water and protection, everything they needed from God through Moses. Just before our story picks up today, they have made it as far as the mountain of God, Mount Sinai. Moses goes to meet with God, and God tells Moses that he wants to meet with all the people. God wants all Israel to hear him speaking with Moses so that they will always trust Moses as their leader. God was beginning to set up the way Israel was going to be required to worship and to live their lives so they could be free from their sin and in right relationship with God. They were going to receive God's law. And the first thing they had to do to be ready to receive it was to consecrate themselves. Consecrate means to declare something sacred, to dedicate something formally to a religious or a divine purpose. <laughs> Scripture tells us that even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves, but everybody had to do it. It wasn't just for a special priestly class or only for ordinary, regular people, as if they weren't special enough and needed some extra help. The cleansing and abstaining was something God required from all of them, and it was going to take two whole days of preparations so that by the third day, they would be ready to approach their holy God. God was requiring all of Israel, each and every person, to do what was necessary to dedicate themselves to God's sacred purpose. Now, because of Jesus' death and resurrection, the church is included among the people dedicated to God's sacred purpose in the world. You know that, right? What does God require of us? Are we taking care to consecrate ourselves so we will be prepared to approach the holy God of all creation who wants to meet with us? People prepare 
for special occasions. Because they're special occasions, right? We talked with the kids about that. Do you remember all that you did during Advent to prepare for the celebration of Christmas Eve and Christmas Day? I don't know about your house, but at my house, we're still putting stuff away. In just a few weeks, we'll begin Lent, a time for preparing for the celebration of Easter Sunday. But is the celebration of God and who God is in our lives from day to day just a thing for special occasions? Or should every time we meet with God be treated like a special occasion? We recognize that we always need God. This morning, we offered up prayers for very certain and specific needs. And all week long, the prayer chain has been busy receiving prayer requests from folks and passing them on and praying for them. We've got a prayer vigil coming up next weekend because this church recognizes the constant need we have for God. Being consecrated as Christians for God's sacred purpose is the most precious thing there is. Do we realize the importance of living consecrated lives each and every day? Now, we don't have an obligation to do everything that the law required of Israel. God sent his son Jesus to be the final sacrifice for our sins so that instead of just doing outward things to show God we're serious about our relationship with him, people could be changed from the inside and do right according to God's expectations because God comes to live in us. You see? That's exactly the point. God living in us changes us so that we want to live the way God calls us to live. I remember when I first came to Christ. I remember Jesus entering my heart, my soul. I remember the Holy Spirit connecting with my spirit in a way that I had not known before. And I remember becoming instantaneously different in some very specific ways. For example, some of the movies and music and television shows that I had enjoyed became offensive to me. Actually, beyond offensive, I think I'd use the word hurtful. When I allowed myself to participate with things that glorified sin, I felt myself, my spirit, being harmed by them. Coming to Christ caused my spirit to become sensitive to God's spirit, and I began to discern when something I was doing or watching or listening to was an offense against God and was hurting me. I realized that participation with sin had the power to interfere with my being able to be a consecrated person as a Christian. God still loved me, no question about that. But God wanted me to move on, to move away from those things that were harming my spirit. Because my spirit, your spirit, is the place where the spirit of God connects with us. I knew deep inside of me that I didn't want to harm my connection with for anything that looked fun or pretty or nice in the world. But something else happened to me, too. I became excited about God. I became excited about church. I became excited about being able to live a life that made me ready to have God come and meet with me. 
I was just as excited about meeting with God on Sunday mornings as I was about Christmas or Easter. I still am. So I get ready. In my head and my heart, like people preparing for a holiday gathering, I get ready every Sunday morning. You've heard me say this before, if you've ever heard me preach, being with God and with God's family is the best place to be. There's nowhere better. And I want to arrive ready to meet with God. I think a lot of church people have lost that excitement. Or they never had it in the first place. There is a loss of respect in our world, for sure. But also in our church for a holy God. Our holy God. Many people today treat living the Christian life and being involved in worship like it's some kind of an open invitation that Christians are free to accept or reject based on whether we feel like we may have something better to do. And when they do show up, the attitude seems to be sort of um, lazy, like, Come as you are, it doesn't matter how we show up, or even if we show up, we're here, kind of. But it's clear in this morning's passage from Exodus that it matters to God. God required all the people to show up and required them to come prepared. God demanded respect and consecration. God was not to be taken for granted. Our wilderness experience in the winter reminds us of the need to respect those things in nature that are beyond our control. The snow and the cold are things that we can take for granted. And when we do, sometimes they cause us great harm. We're going to have a visit from Bob Sled and um, another fireside chat. Why don't you join me? Just see the sleigh bells jingling, ring, tingle, tingle, ring, too. Ring, 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 He's one wild and crazy guy, right? Yeah. I like to have fun. I like to enjoy life. I even love to enjoy winter. Maybe even go out for that sleigh ride with some friends. But the truth is, I've learned some lessons from going through many a winter storm here in Western New York. And although being wild and crazy may seem fun, it's not always wise. Let me share some wisdom with you. Yes, winter can be fun, but it can also be dangerous. We need a healthy respect for it. Might I even say a healthy fear of the winter weather that comes our way. For instance, I encouraged you last week to go take a walk in a winter wonderland. But look first, is it blustery? Is there ice everywhere? You've got to prepare the way then. You shouldn't just go rushing out into the winter weather. It takes preparation. It takes time to make sure it's safe. Icy? Throw salt down on that ice and wait for it to sink in. And then it makes it safe for walking. Otherwise, you'll go slipping and sliding all over the place, and you're likely to get hurt. Oh, you're still with me. Yes, now, if you're going in a car, think ahead. You can be prepared that way, too. Hopefully, you don't get in an accident, but just in case. Now, you're always going to want a flashlight, a blanket to keep you warm, especially when you have to stand outside when you're doing takes for this and your phone charged, just in case, and you always, always want to check in with your mom. You don't want to make her worry. Love you, mom. There's so much more you can do to prepare. Think ahead about it. Take the time. I've learned the hard way that it's worth it to have a healthy respect for the winter weather. Yeah, I'm moving just a little bit slower now. Yeah, I think that was the church parking lot. <laughs> Every winter, 
There are people who get into their cars unprepared, aren't there? Yeah. My grandfather. My grandfather was always on me about being prepared in the winter. He thought he had to make sure that I had everything that I needed because I was this little girl behind the wheel, right? Um, but he always insisted that I have a few things in addition to some of the things that Bob mentioned. One of them was to make sure I had at least half a tank of gas. Never let it go below half a tank, okay? Um, if that's, you know, if you get stuck, you want to you make sure you're going to be warm. If you run out of gas, that's not happening, right? One of the things he insisted that I keep inside the car was a little shovel to dig around. You know, if I, if I got stuck in some snow, went off a little bit and, you know, got spinning and, and stuff, I had to have my little shovel, and I had to have a bag of either sand or kitty litter. Okay? And kitty litter is what I usually had. Nowadays, I think, though, if you threw the kitty litter out there, it would just plump up. I don't know what that <laughs> plumping stuff. But, yeah, you want to have that, get some traction. Get some traction under those wheels, right? And then he gave me this empty metal coffee can. Okay. Inside the coffee can was a candle and a pack of matches wrapped up in a plastic bag keep them dry. And he said, you need this. If you ever get stuck somewhere and you can't get out and you get cold, you need this. You all know what that was used for, right? Back in the day. Anybody still keep those in their car? I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't either. But um, I heard a story, though. I, I, I heard uh, a friend of mine I ran into on Wednesday when the weather got so bad on Wednesday, remember? And I saw my friend, and he's got this jacket on. All he, that's it. Just a little lightweight jacket, too, not one of those heavy fleecy ones or, you know, something with some little jacket. And I said, I really hope you have, like, a hat and a scarf and some gloves in the car for your drive home, which is going to be about 25 minutes on snowy roads. And he says, no, I've got, I'll be in the car. It'll be fine. I said, well, but really, what if you, what if something happens? I mean, God, I hope it doesn't, and I'll pray for you, but what if you happen to skid off the road or something, and you get stuck, and you can't get help right away? You're going to get really cold. I don't know, I was a little worried, a little worried about that. Pastor Tom said last week that we don't want to be carrying around more than we need. And that's true, I think. You know, I, don't need, I don't need six scarves in my car. I don't need four pairs of gloves in my car. One candle, one tin can, that'll do. But I do want to make sure that I have the things that I need. I have to recognize what the conditions are and have a healthy respect for them. Sometimes even a happy sleigh ride can become very dangerous, even a life-threatening situation very quickly. Throughout the Bible, we can read about people who found themselves in big trouble when they neglected to live consecrated lives according to God's expectation. I think many people have lost a clear sense of the relationship boundaries between themselves and God. When I began following Jesus as a serious disciple, I remember the music and the preaching and the teaching strongly emphasizing God's holiness and the attitude of great awe and reverence that I was supposed to have in approaching God. In recent years, I've noticed a shift in people's attitudes about God. It's all about well, God's my friend, and God loves me no matter what I do, praise God. And it doesn't matter if I go to church or not. I can go worship God anywhere, because God's everywhere. I can worship anywhere I am. Well, I, I've read the book, and the thing is that in the book, God calls people his friends who have proved their faithfulness. God loves everybody God created, but only those who repent of their sin and live consecrated lives get eternal life with God. 
and Christians find communion with God in the community of the saints as they commune together with other people who are Jesus' disciples. Even when Jesus sent them out two by two to do ministry, when they returned, the first thing they did was to all get together. God's grace is in God offering to meet with us. God's holiness requires that we respond reverently according to God's expectations of us. Many have lost the awareness of what holiness is and how grateful we must all be that God comes to be with us. They think they can treat God any way they want, and it doesn't matter. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't times when we're missing from church for whatever reason. We might be sick. We might be on vacation. God loves when we take vacation. We, he knows that we need to rest. There are all kinds of reasons why we might not show up every single Sunday. Again, it's the heart attitude. It's about where we're at and recognizing that we need the church. That's why God gave us the church. Have respect for God. My husband Romney and I were on a Miss Buffalo cruise many years ago. And it was with a group of old friends, old, old friends. One of them was a longtime friend of Romney's that I ultimately became very close to myself. She became one of my bridesmaids. We got that close that I asked her, please, please be in our wedding. Don't just come. Be in it. And I used to give her private ballet lessons, and then she'd take me out to lunch. We were just becoming really, really good friends. Well, on that particular cruise, she had put her hair up and had it all bobby pinned up and tucked up under this cute little beret. And um, we were all having fun. She looked really nice, and I decided I wanted to try on the beret because I thought I'd look cute in the beret too. Yeah, well, I asked her, and she said no. I asked her again, and she said no. I was really, I was fooling around in that kind of mood, and I reached for the beret, and she pulled back, and she said, no, really, you can't try on my hat. Really. I was a little um, annoyed. I didn't know why it made such a big difference. But I did want to try on the darn hat. I really did. And as we all continued to talk and laugh and have a good time, when she wasn't paying attention, I snatched the thing right off her head. Now, it was bobby pinned to her head, so it must have hurt when I pulled it off to begin with. And I had it, and I was showing her I had it, and I was playing that, I got it now, come get it, come, you know, come get it back for me. And I, I was trying to try it on, and then I realized why she was wearing the beret. Her, her schedule had been such that she hadn't had time to wash her hair and fix it up before she came on the cruise with us. And so rather than having greasy, stringy hair, she coiled it all up, Bobby pinned it down, and put the cute little beret on it, and she looked real nice. Well, everybody got real quiet. And she was real mad. I really thought that if she could have, she would have picked me up and tossed me overboard into the river. I felt awful. I had completely disrespected her. I had disregarded her feelings, and I had disregarded her response. Not once, but three times. No, you can't try on my hat today. I had crossed a line, and crossing that line hurt our friendship. God has set boundary lines for our relationships with each other. And God has set boundary lines for our relationship with him. They're all in here. We need to know what they are. 
We need to follow it and respect it. People ask, well, come on, isn't God just supposed to take me as I am? Isn't God supposed to love me no matter what? Sure. When we first come to God and realize our need for a Savior, God accepts us right where we're at. And then God expects us to make Jesus the Lord of our lives. And that means we need to consecrate ourselves, to be ready, because God wants to meet with us. God expects us to grow and change, moving away from sin, moving away from participating with things that harm our spirits. I remember a time when people put on their Sunday best to come to church. Some people still do. But I don't really think God cares so much about how people are dressed on the outside. I think God cares about how they're dressed on the inside. Although I'll tell you, Having read the book, I know I'm getting this brilliant white robe when I get up there. You looking forward to your brilliant white robe? I am. I can't wait. I see people nodding their heads. I see some people looking like, what? A what? I'm going to have a what? Read the book. It's in there. It's in there. For now, church, it's the attitude of our hearts. God wants to see people's hearts changed into an attitude of utmost respect and reverence for our whole God. We're going to stand and we're going to sing about how great our God is, about how God is the God of all creation, about how God is the one to be worshipped and praised above all. Stand with me if you're willing, if you're able, if you're ready to praise God.
I couldn't do it myself. All seeking of God ultimately leads to the cross. No matter how you're seeking, if you're looking for God, you're going to run face to face right into Jesus. Everything leads to the cross. Are you going to come to the cross today? Are you going to come to the table where we remember that Jesus died for us? Come and receive. Let's pray this next song that God will lead us to the cross, that we will be able to give up all those things that keep us from being close with him. Lead us to the cross, Lord. Lead us to the cross.
feel hard. It's a process. Little by little, we seek God. We listen for God's voice. And God lets us know what those things are that God wants from us. What those things are that God wants us to rid ourselves of because we belong to God. It's easy. One step at a time. Sometimes it's not comfortable. Sometimes God calls us to rid ourselves of things we want to hang on to. And sometimes God wants us to do things that make us feel uncomfortable. If God's with us, it's okay. It's okay. My friend eventually forgave me. I was outrageously grateful to her. I knew I had been wrong, I knew I had hurt her, and I learned a valuable lesson that day about how far to push a friend. Sometimes we push God. God wants to forgive us. God loves us. God wants us to draw closer to him to consecrate ourselves so we're ready to meet him. Let's take a moment now in silent prayer and search our hearts. What does God want us to give up? What does God want us to do? How have we blocked that relationship? In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And we're going to sing a song now as we're getting ready to receive from God. God welcomes you to the table. God welcomes me. God welcomes even all the rest of us. It just, you know, God welcomes us to the table if we love him. If we earnestly repent of our sin and seek to live in peace as a disciple of Christ. We are welcome at the table, even if it's the first time you've ever walked through the doors of a church. Come and seek God and trust that God will meet you here, that God will fill you, that God will continue to love you. We stand before God, a holy God, and we lift our hands in worship, and we lift our hearts in worship, we lift our voices in praise.
I remember being in a church once for many, many years where um, the worship leader used to say at a time like this, please be seated if you're able. <laughs> so often we say stand if you're, we understand that there, you know, there are folks who have troubles with, I had a, when my, I had my hip replaced, I couldn't, I had a horrible time standing for more than a, a moment or two. So we understand when folks can't do that, but don't you sometimes just feel that exuberance and that excitement in God come to such a high place and a high level that you just want to go, what do you mean it's time to sit down? We come to the table because coming to the table is one of those high places. Coming up to the altar, coming to where God wants to meet with us. You are welcome. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Before the mountains were brought forth or you had formed the earth, from everlasting to everlasting, you alone are God. You created light out of darkness and brought forth life on the earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he gave you thanks and praise and he gave it to his disciples. He said, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new covenant poured out for you, poured out for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. And on these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Shall we pray with confidence, the confidence that comes from a consecrated life, the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For those who are serving, please come forward.
come worship God. Come to the rail and, and light a candle if you like as you say a prayer and come for anointing and prayer. Come and meet with God. You're invited. and join us in our closing hymn.
consecration process changes us from the inside, little by little. And when we change from the inside, we won't be like Israel at Sinai, having to just do outward things to show our love for God and to prepare ourselves. Those changes on the inside turn into how we look on the outside without us really doing anything on the outside except follow what God wants us to do. When we have that change evident in our outward self, that's when all those people out there see Jesus on our faces. That's when those people out there see Jesus coming at them. And it's a blessing to be able to be seen in that way because of God. Amen? All right, so as you go, go out being blessed to be a blessing and let those inward changes become outward things that bless other people so they see Jesus. Go in peace.